Hello, my name is John Patrick Morgan and I am going to share with you in the next few minutes how to deal with difficult and toxic people. Man, they suck. So, I'm actually going to share with you a three-step process where if you take on, you will actually not only be able to deal with the difficult person in your life, but actually eradicate difficult people from your life completely. I can say that because I don't have them in my life. I don't have difficult people or toxic people in my life at all. And so I want to share with you how I've created that and how you can create it too. Three steps, ready? Step number one, you actually have to start at the idea that the solution is to deal with this person. You see, a person who believes in their mind or in their body in any way that the way to make it through life when you have a person who's difficult is to deal with them. The idea that all you can do is deal with people when they're difficult or toxic actually creates a potential in you that invites difficult and toxic people into your world. So the starting point is actually somewhere different than deal with. So I have the belief, the idea, that I don't have to deal with difficult or toxic people. And, and what that means, I'm just moving because the sun's on my face. Um, the, what that means is I actually don't even exist in a universe where there are difficult or toxic people. And so those people just move away from me energetically, but also I just don't let them into my world in a way where I actually have to spend my time with them. Or in the third one I'll get to in step three, or I create them and I change them in such a way where they're not difficult anymore. So the beginning point is to accept as a, as a possibility that you can actually be totally and completely free from this difficult or toxic person and for that matter from difficult and toxic people overall. It's not taking the stance of dealing with, it's taking the stance of actually eradicating and or, and or removing this difficult and toxic situation. Completely removing it, completely free. That has to be your starting point or else you can never get any further than dealing with and let's be honest, Dealing with is not fulfilling, like negotiating a little bit of this, a little bit of that, like balancing it out. It's like, you, that's not actually what you want. What you actually want is to be free of it. And it might sound completely impossible. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's a business partner. Maybe it's your significant other. It's like, shit, how do I deal with a difficult or toxic husband or wife? Well, yes, I'm actually talking about this right here. You will always fall short of fulfillment when your starting point is to deal with. So you want to conceptualize it differently. That sets you up, all right? And so how do I be completely free of a difficult and toxic person? That's a much better question because the answer that it could provide you is, is much greater, much more fulfilling. Moving on to step two. And by the way, there's so much more I have to say about each of these steps. I'm giving you the smallest amount that I can so it can fit in this video, but if you want to learn more, make sure you click out the, check the links below uh, for my creating insights by email or check out my creating school. But anyway, I'll get to that a little bit later. The second step, you actually have to understand a distinction that's quite subtle in the beginning, but once you get it, it's so clear and so powerful. And this distinction is going to blow your mind once you understand it. I can say that because I've been sharing it with clients for years and it's been blowing their minds and they've been telling me that it's been blowing their minds and changing their lives. It's a simple way of conceptualizing that takes one thing and splits it into two things. So people have this idea of like, oh, there's a person that's either in my life or they're not. And I'm actually gonna take that either in my life or the not and split it, split it into two things. And so let me share the distinction, then I'll share what I mean by splitting it into two things. The distinction is allow everything, but accommodate very little. Allow everything, accommodate very little. And so what it does is it splits the outside world from the inside world. The first part, allow everything, that really points to the inside world of your heart, of your mind, of your body, of your emotions, of your thoughts. And the accommodation is what you do with time and space on the outside, in the outside world. And so a person is in your life both internally and in how you experience it and externally and what time and space they take up, like the physical actual world. And so I allow everything on the inside, that's step two. 
How do I do that? Well, what does it mean to not allow? If somebody's being in a certain way, they're having a certain behavior and I'm resisting that, I'm actually creating the experience of that as difficult. If somebody is talking to me in a way I don't like and I say to that's not okay, they should speak differently, that's my resistance, that actually creates the experience of it being a problem for me. So my pain is created by my resistance to what's occurring out there. And you may say that this thing is really, really toxic, this is really poor behavior. And I'm not saying that you are going to necessarily have that in your world, that's where the accommodating comes in, but as a first step, the step two, the step before you can stop accommodating things in your world powerfully is you need to actually be at peace with it on the inside. If you want to go deeper into how to do that, check out my video, Love to Death, What You Hate. This is the deeper understanding of how to actually take something and start actually allowing it in your heart. But in essence, what you need to do is have it be okay. Whatever is occurring in the outside world, at least on the inside, emotionally, I'm okay with it. And how do you do that? Well, I just accept it. It's okay. I'm not going to judge it. It's happening, so I'm, I'm going to be at peace with it. Because to not be at peace with it, guess who suffers that? You do, or I do. Whoever's the one that's resisting, they're the one that suffers. So you want to start by setting yourself free in your heart, in your body, by allowing it to be because it's happening. It's okay on the inside because if it's not, I suffer. All right, so that's step two. Allow everything. There's literally nothing that I won't allow on the inside because I don't want to suffer, right? So it's all good. Whatever's happening, it's happening. I'm cool. It's all right. Now step three. This is where we look at the outside world and what are we doing with our time and space? Who are we allowing into our universe, into our world to take up our time and space on the outside? Allowing on the outside, I use the word accommodating. So on the inside, I allow everything. On the outside, I accommodate very little outside of that which I desire and that which I would love. And so if somebody's behaving in a way that's difficult or toxic, I'm not going to accommodate that. I'm going to say, no, and no, thank you. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to do it with peace and with relaxation. Because if I do it when I'm internally resisting, my heart is at war, then my external non-accommodation is fight. It's aggression. It's passive aggressive at best, right? But it's aggressive and it's not going to be pretty. It's going to exacerbate. It's going to make it worse. And so a lot of you are probably watching this video having held back from saying no on the outside. And I'm saying that the reason you're not saying no, I'm sorry, the reason you're, yeah, not saying no on the outside, it's actually beautiful. You're not saying no on the outside because deep down you know that there's an internal resistance and then there's an aggressive nature and if you said no, that's a fight response and that's just adding gasoline to the fire. It's not going to help. It's not healthy. And so you're actually right and you're holding back. You're just and you're holding back. You're wise and you're holding back from not accommodating when you've got in you an energy of resistance because it's just going to get worse. It's not pretty. You can't create anything beautiful from that, from that place. That's why before we stop accommodating behavior on the outside, we want to actually be at peace in our heart and be like, it's okay. See their innocence. Stop judging them. Stop judging the situation is wrong. Let go. Relax. Everything's okay. And now from this place of I'm cool, I'm relaxed, I'm okay, that's still not something I want in my world. I don't want to hang out with that. And now I can actually speak from a relaxed place as I speak speak to stop accommodating. So how do I speak to stop accommodating? Well, I speak not in no, 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 all right, that's what I said earlier, I know, but actually the most productive way to not accommodate is to speak to what you will and do want to accommodate. So whatever it is you don't want to happen anymore, well, when that's not happening, what do I want? Well, I'll tell you a little quick story about a guy that was in a coffee shop every day that I loved going to, and he had extremely bad body odor. And it was to the point where I couldn't drink my coffee without enjoying also his body odor as I'm drinking the coffee. And I was like getting like judgment, like it's almost like this guy's secondhand smoke is going into my face and it's like, what's wrong with this guy, you know? And it's like, yeah, but I know I don't feel very good right now. For me to speak to the world, to have the world adjust from this pain on the inside is just me spreading pain out. It's like, well, he's gonna smell and then I'm gonna actually bring pain and violence out. That's even worse, why would I do that? So I need to find my own peace with it first. And so I got in and I looked at my own judgment and I started to let go of that stuff and I saw his innocence. And anyway, I did all the work I needed to do to allow. I can teach you all about that in creating school. If you're interested, check out the link below. But in short, I got to peace, I allowed, and then I could actually see the dude and who he actually was and I got curious and I started to talk to him from this pace of wanting to create a beautiful space where 
he was not only feeling loved, but I got to actually drink coffee in a way that didn't smell gross. There was not toxins, like speak of toxic people coming into my body through the odors as I was trying to drink it. And so I spoke to him, I was like, dude, what's going on? I just listened. So that's one thing that happens when you actually come from love. You think instead of just fighting, I can actually listen and get curious what's going on for this person. And then from that place, I was able to see what his struggle was and help him to see the impact that he was having. And he didn't even know that there was a candle they'd burn whenever he was there to compensate for it. He felt a little bit bad about that. I felt him find ways to get more of what he needed to get himself cleaned up and to smell not so much in a way that he would impact people. And there was a beautiful result created from that, a connection and understanding. Suddenly he wasn't there as much, and when he was there, he'd done his efforts to not smell so bad, and we had created a beautiful space. So I didn't accommodate it, but I didn't accommodate it by speaking from love and for what I did want to accommodate. I explained to him that I wanted to be able to drink my coffee at my favorite cafe in a way that I could enjoy it, while at the same time I wanted him to be able to enjoy his coffee too. What could we do to create that? So so when you don't want something, what do you want? Speak in the positive to that. The most important thing though, because this is just, if you try to do this from a heart at war still, it's not going to work. You want to speak to the positive of what you would love to create from being okay with whatever before you were resisting because you did step two, that's at peace. And all of this, remember where we started, step one, I can actually be completely and totally free from this difficult and toxic person in my life. Either they move away or they become transformed to, to a not difficult or toxic person because a person at peace and in love was able to speak to what they really wanted, connect with them on a human level and create something more beautiful. Now if these ideas speak to you at a deep level or if they're tripping you up and you're like, what the fuck, how is this even possible to have a life where there's no difficult or toxic people? I don't buy it but actually I'm kind of curious then please check out more of my videos. Click the links below. Get my Creating Insights by email. Super short distilled insights from these videos down to a few lines by email. Or uh, you can check out my creating school. Join us directly and get involved and be part of the conversation. Learn the creating perspective because the more that you see that you actually create everything in your world, like I said, that's step one, right? That's an example of that. Your idea of deal with actually creates difficult people in your world as the more you see that you create everything in your life and in your world, the more you actually access your power to create anything that you want. That's my life, that's my world, that's my work. My name is John Patrick Morgan. I love you for being here and watching all the way to the end. And, to the end, and um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.